Well, I've assembled two amazing bits of kit. The F1 Ultimate Play Seat, and we've got the Thrustmaster SF1000 add-on wheel. But we need, a wheel to, we need a wheelbase to add it onto. So let's hook up the Ultimate Thrustmaster Play Seat combo, and then let's fire up F1 2020 with that wheel. All right, so we're gonna use um, this as the base unit, then we're gonna add the uh, pedals, and then we'll throw on the add-on unit. I mean, this is a great wheel. This is what we've got at home. Um, but it's kind of not quite Ferrari. Drilling template we won't need. I assume. Tell you what, they make solid kit Thrustmaster. I've got all the Thrustmaster aviation stuff. It's amazing. The uh, rudders, just first class. Oh wow, look at the engineering in that. Metal, spring, you can see the quality in it. Oh, it's a solid, very heavy feel to the brake as well. What I'm not seeing are screws. Okay, so today we learned two things. Uh, steering wheels and pedals don't come with M6 screws. They're the screws that you need to attach them to things like this. They do come with clamps so you can put them on a desk, but we're doing a lot more than that. And also, Bunnings opens at 6 a.m. So there you go. All right, we have M6 screws. I've gone for the screw cap one so that I can just twist them in. Let's get assembling. So on the back of this, there's like a weird, um, it looks like an old phone plug, but it's just a very specific connection that goes to the pedals. There's a shifter connection, we don't need that. There's USB connection, I think that's for PC. And then um, there's the power. I oh, know the USB is for the, obviously to the Xbox. So let's, let's get the pedal uh, connector in place. I don't know if there's actual wiring instructions. Look, I'm not gonna wire it for permanent use because this is going back to the good people at the gamesmen. So um, this will be a bit jerry-rigged. Let's just make sure we've got all the right cables in the first place. So the thing here is you don't want to, um, you definitely don't want, what are we actually, might have to look at the place seat um, instructions to see where they suggest the cables go because you don't want to put it in the way of your movement of this. You also don't want it kind of in your in the way of your feet. So that's a fascinating one. All right, so when I put the play seat together, and you see that video on the channel, um, there was two ways to mount this. Guess what? It's around the other way. <laughs> so we'll pull that apart, twist it around, because there's literally one position for this, um, so it needs to go the other way around. But that's an easy fix, which we can do now. We have pedals, we have a wheelbase. It's time to unbox the beast 
we're not going to bother with this. Just You know what? Let's just make sure it works first. Wheel comes forward, feet go up. I'm going to want those up further. So we're going to tilt that. Anyway, we'll worry about that in a minute. Let's just get all this working first. Let's just make sure it all works. And then we'll do some serious adjustments. Feels like it's working. <coughs> so what I know sitting here now is I want the wheel lower. So I want this whole black base lower, but I want the wheel still pointing up at this direction. So I'm going to want to tilt down and across. And we definitely want the pedals tilted up in some way. All right. So we've done a little bit of adjustment here. I've uh, tilted the pedals. I'll fix the cables later. I've tilted the pedals. Yep. Okay. Tilted the pedals. I've got some wheel control. But now, uh, there's a distance to the wheel, but let's just lock it in anyway. So that's my wheel position. I might tilt it down a little bit in a minute, but let's get the real thing happening. This is magnificent. Utterly stunning. Look at it. Just look at that. Now, there are the T-Chrono um, paddles, which is basically a replacement for the standard shifters. Um, I'll show you quickly what that is and why. It's in here. Do we need it? USB to A to USB C. We'll find out. So, these are the T Chrono optional $600 wheel optional shifter paddles. Now, I'll do it up here so you can hear it on my microphone. That's the rigid sound of the standard, and it's, it's a much lighter click, which I think would make for quicker upshifts, but I love the sound of that and the feel of it. So, I'm going to run with that for now. And then we'll um, we'll switch it out. All right. So you can see the wheel booting up. <laughs> this is just epic. So the wheel obviously has its own operating system. Just going to tighten that fully. Get rid of that. <coughs> I'm definitely going to want this tilted up more. Now, I don't know how long it takes to boot or whether I need to reload the game here, but we'll see. Yeah, so that's better. Not a lot of knee room in this play seat. I'll tell you that for nothing. Oh wow, <laughs> feels cool. Oh, it's magnificent.
I actually really like the heavy shift. Hey ya! All right, I um, I can't stop looking at the wheel. Everything just all these buttons they do things. I'm sure. Oh wow. Okay, so that's my. Oh, look at that. So front brake, brake bias, I can change with a twist here. Differential, I can change. I mean, I've never been able to do that so easily. So that's the menu button. We need to do some serious mapping. That's my reverse look. So the standard mapping is pretty interesting. So a lot of use for the front brake, brake bias. They're all doing the same thing. So let's uh, kill the game and see if we get the screen with a reboot of the game. So, I've made a lot of progress. A lot of things required to get this working. Um, firstly, firmware upgrades. I needed to connect this base to the PC and the wheel to the PC. There's a USB-C uh, setting in the back. Uh, did the firmware upgrades on both. Then I downloaded a manual because no, there was no manual in the box that I got. There might be in a normal one, but I'm not really sure. Um, after that, I needed to learn a lot about this. So firstly, this dial here takes me, when you push it, it takes me into a menu system for the wheel. And there's a couple of things required here. Firstly, you need to turn on Wi-Fi. You need to connect your phone to the wheel as a direct Wi-Fi connection. Once you do that, you tell the wheel to search for your home Wi-Fi network. Once you connect to the home Wi-Fi network, it's then can, this wheel is now connecting to my home Wi-Fi network and I've got an IP address on the screen here and that will become relevant shortly. The other thing I needed to do was in this little setting here, I needed to select Codemasters F1. When it was on UDP off, um, using this toggle, when it was on UDP off, not working. With Codemasters on, it's all under control. Press this button, and we're back ready to go. Now in the game settings, there's a couple of things you need to do. And it is like, honestly, it's a pretty complex scenario. It's a pretty complex setup, but once you've done it, it's done. Um, basically what's happening is the game is sending data out on your Wi-Fi network, which this is then picking up. And there's a couple of ways it can do that. I'll take you down to game options. I haven't configured the wheel in any way or whatsoever. We go down to telemetry settings and you need to turn, oh, this isn't on. So let me turn that on. Um, you need to be in broadcast mode off and you need to set the IP address. So we're going to do all this again. I hadn't done it already. So probably easier if I had a controller with me. 192. So what's happening now is the game is going to broadcast this telemetry data directly to this IP address. So hopefully that will all work when we get it going. Back, saved, back, back, and let's go into, so I've still got the standard uh, wheel on here, and let's just get into a time trial. And of course we're gonna be McLaren in Australia. Uh, and then we'll just check the wheel settings are again set up, and uh, it'll be game on. So we can see here, we've got a timer counting. Um, nothing else is showing because there's nothing else to show. Let me go to the menu here, check the preferences. Uh, control. We're gonna check that we're on the F1 wheel. We're gonna enable that. Uh, I'm not gonna change any settings. That'll be something I'll play with at a later date. But now, let's go to track. So, you can see here, it's it's me driving. And it's almost instantaneous. Now, I'll just pause it for a second. So what's happening is, the data is being broadcast to here and showing up on this screen. I'll get out of menu mode and you'll be able to see it but I'll just drive slowly and now we've got a couple of options on what we want to see here on the screen so there's a couple of different screens you can see um, this is just such a beautiful wheel it feels amazing 
oh, to drive. It's, yeah, it's a lovely wheel. Let me concentrate back on what I was talking about. So, the display settings allow me to run across the grass. So, I can switch the wheel here. So, I've got this really kind of basic view, which I don't know how we tell it with hot lap or not. There's ERS stuff there. There's a timer. There are some tire temps. Then you've got this one, which is actually essentially the data. Um, I, I, we can probably flick through this somehow, but this is actually the data that is coming out of the game. That's what it's seeing. And then this one is a bit more comprehensive. We've got a DRS and ERS indicator on there. Um, so there's a lot of information in here. It's kind of very feature or information rich display. Um, for the one that really looks a little bit more like the one that's actually on the screen, we just flip to the side. Now I've, I've sat the wheel up quite high, so I'm really seeing those shift indicators come through in my eye line better than I ever have on any other wheel. And they're so bright. These LEDs are really bright. It's been a while, I'm a bit, a bit rusty. So oh, I just think it's unbelievable. It's mind blowing. So let's just have a quick look at what settings are possible uh, in the preferences before we duck away. So controls, let's go down here and edit. So um, accelerate reverse, we're not gonna wanna change that. I'm gonna take my shoes off so it's easy to drive. So next camera, do we wanna change cameras? I mean, let's just see how that works. Um, Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what happens, but that doesn't seem like, because it's a plus and minus, so it doesn't seem like the kind of thing you would map to that. Look forward, look back, look right, look left. Activate DRS, well, what is that? Let's make DRS this button. Oh, so that's the menu button. Um, no, maybe this button. No, that's the X. So you don't know what any of these buttons are because they're not shown. I don't need look back, so I actually don't mind that. That's good for DRS. That's the A button as well. So it's so, so many similarities. Maybe I'll put DRS down here. No? Mm. Uh, Got to learn a lot about the multifunction displays. Gears we don't need. Manual clutch. So this is actually, these are mapped as um, the accelerator and the brake. I'm wondering if I can map that as my clutch. So I've got a back pedal here. So, I mean, really simply put, I don't think this is as customizable as it is on the PC version of the game. That said, it's pretty bloody awesome. So let's just see, what, what did I end up putting the DRS as? Uh, was it this one? Let me change that to that. So these buttons are essentially mirrored on the Xbox. These are all the A, X, B, and Y buttons mirrored on the Xbox. What's this one? That's the menu. We don't want that. Jeez. Uh, DRS. I want a button for it. I do. No, definitely not that. Yeah, I don't want the radio command, so I'm going to make it that. Nope, nope. Any unassigned. So not everything works. Like this button, these buttons can't do anything.
So, let's pause this. All right, so this is what we want to change. This part here, easy done. Okay, so simple Allen key, four screws. So this one goes on, just clips in, screw it in. Okay. Oh, it's a much snappier change. It's not as satisfying to hear the click, but boy, it's it's super snappy on the on the change. So, feels really nice. Let's have a little look. This is the most F1 like I've ever felt in a, in a sim playing this game. And I've played a lot of this game. So let's just see what the race start looks like. I just wanna see the screen, come on. There we go. Butchered the start. I want to see tyre wear. So my tyres are at 95% here. Oh yeah. Sorry boys. So 6%, 94%. So it's accurately reflecting those things. Uh, the tyre wear that was showing there was absolutely spot on to what I'm seeing here on the screen. The brake is very different to the brakes I'm used to. Let me just see, so we've got a lap counter here as well. Oh, I've got my position on the track. So all this stuff I can take off the screen now if I wanted to as well, because it's all on my, uh, my steering wheel display. So on this display, let's just slow down and have a look here. I've got speed, lap, position on track, tire wear. I'm not sure what the red and Green are very hard to look at the wheel while you're racing. How's Nicholas Latifi in front of me? Come on, Charles. So let's just look at what else is on these things. So this is the detailed display. I need my glasses on here. Position here, laps, ERS, DRS. Let's look on this, on this DRS zone. Oh, there's no DRS probably because it's only the first lap. Second lap, let's do another lap. Fuel and temps, what else have we got? That's the other display we already saw, and this is the real basic display, which has a very good lap counter. Oh, what was that? Medium overtake. There's something appearing on the screen here, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's very hard to look down at the screen. bouncing between the walls. I find it quite off-putting when the AI touches the steering wheel. I just want DRS, thanks. And then we can see where that appears. Never mind.
Oh, I don't have DRS. Look, I gotta say, I love this and I would absolutely buy this wheel in a heartbeat. Um, it's, I'm just trying to ruin these back tires so I can get a bit of wear on the screen. Rear tire wear is going down by the second. Loving it. 85. 84. I'm really wearing out those tires. This is the most beautiful thing you could buy for the F1 2020 game. Uh, if you've got a Thrustmaster that's compatible with this, buy this wheel. It's spectacular. Um, I just can't wait to actually get into the game and have a bit of a play. Uh, you can buy this Thrustmaster at the Gamesman. Check out thegamesman.com.au. Tell them, tell them EFTM sent you.